Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. My name is Wendy and I am with Inspire Ministries and if you are new here, welcome. I'm so glad that you have landed on today's video. Today I want to just speak from the heart, something that has been on my mind for a few months actually now, something that I have been longing to come to you with. I've been in a pretty busy season myself in the last couple months, so I've had this one on the back burner for a while, but I want to encourage you because now is the time that I feel like we as believers need to encourage one another in the faith. And so if you want to be encouraged in your faith for how to fight in the good fight. Stay until the end of this video. Today I want to talk to you about regulations of war or how to keep fighting in your spiritual battle when you are feeling tired. Listen, I get it. I get it more than you know. You have been fighting for so long to keep it all together, to hold it all together, spiritually speaking. And I understand. I have too. And I need you to know something. I need you to know that God sees you. I need to let you know that He knows you. He knows the genuineness of your heart. He knows the willingness of your spirit. And He loves you for the valiant efforts that you are making. The truth is that you can't hide from God. He knows your heart. He sees it all. He knows it all. And like I have said on repeat in this channel, if you've been a part of this journey with me for any length of time, I've said this on repeat. I believe that God honors the intentions of your heart. But the truth is that life is hard. And right now, I think that there is a commonality among believers that life is harder than we have seen it ever before. Today, I want to take you to a little place in Scripture that I found during my quiet time many months ago, and it quite possibly could have been overlooked if I didn't dig into it a little bit deeper. It is found in the book of Deuteronomy. So if you have your Bibles, I would love for you to get it. It so that you can look at the pages of these scriptures for yourself. In chapter 20, Moses is talking to the people of Israel, and he is giving them instructions, and he is giving them regulations for how to deal in war. In my Bible, the title of this section of scripture is in fact titled, The Regulations of War. I want to read to you the first five verses of chapter 20 in the book of Deuteronomy. And it starts off by saying this, When you go out to fight your enemies and you face horses and chariots and an army greater than your own, do not be afraid. The Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt is with you. When you prepare for battle, the priests must come forward to speak to the troops. He will say to them, listen to me, all you men of Israel. Do not be afraid as you go out to fight your enemies today. Do not lose heart or panic or tremble before them, for the Lord your God is going with you. He will fight for you against your enemies and he will give you victory. So we see some interesting things first and foremost in this book. He tells the Israelites things like do not be afraid. We just read that in verse 1. He also tells them in verse 2 to do not panic, do not tremble before the enemies. In, in other words, don't let them see that you are actually fearful. And what Moses does is he expresses the conditions for which some are excused for battle. And that's what we see going forward in the subsequent verses following verse 5. Now, he says three specific people groups that were excused from war during this time. The first group of people who were excused from battling in war were, according to verse 5, those who had just built a new house and not yet dedicated it. The second group were those who had planted a vineyard but not eaten any of its fruit yet, and that's found in verse 6. And then in verse 7, he says that the other group of people who are excused from battle are anyone who just became engaged and have not yet married their mate. But then we come to something interesting in verse 8, and it says this, 
Is anyone here afraid or worried? If you are, you may go home before you frighten anyone else. You see, those among the promised land-bound Israelites who were afraid and worried, they were released to go home. I want to suggest to you this. Some of those who were worried and fearful were excused from battle because sometimes the reduction of an army is indeed the increase of effectiveness. Let me read that to you again. Sometimes the reduction of an army is indeed the increase of effectiveness. Have you ever been around someone who is so filled with fear that it actually begins to have a negative effect on you? I have. In fact, God has blessed me beyond measure, and I say this all of the time, with a husband who is such an unafraid man, one who never overreacts, and who basically remains unbothered by the outside conditions or the outside cares of the world. Now, of course, that doesn't mean that he doesn't worry in his own way and in his own manner personally, but he never allows fear and trembling to be the definition of his character. And I love him for that strength that he possesses. And I've had to rely on that many times throughout my life when I myself have been overcome with fear and worry. But there's just something about despair and worry that is contagious, isn't there? The Israelites experienced it. When they were traveling from their promised land, Scripture tells us, according to Exodus 12.38, that there was a mixed multitude who traveled with them. They journeyed with them to their promise. They were this remnant of people from Egypt who longed to see the promise that God had made to the people that he called his own. But they journeyed with fear and anxiety, and most of all for regret for seemingly better days in their homeland. And when they started to grumble and complain about their conditions, so did the Israelites. Fear and trembling is a contagion. Now back to Deuteronomy 20 verse 8. The fearful ones were granted an excuse from battle. But let's take another look at this. Let's take another view at this. While these soldiers were dismissed because of their faintfulness of heart due to fear, there is another faintness that all Christian troops experience from time to time. And that's faintness that arises from long dedicated service, long continued effort of serving the Lord and God honoring duty. You see, when we wake up daily fighting the good fight of faith, pursuing Jesus with our whole hearts, when we face persecution for our beliefs, when we enter into the weary battlefield day after day after day, we at times become so faint of heart that it's hard to stand alone and fight. There are days where we feel that we don't have it all within us to keep going anymore, and I think it's more common than we realize. I have been talking to scores of friends who we all share this commonality in our conversation. And one of the things that I have had a conversation with among Christian believers over and over and over again is this feeling of unrest or being unsettled. And that is just this common feeling that I feel like a majority of us are feeling, especially in this season of time. And so one of the things I want you to know is that you are not alone. If you are feeling weary, if you're feeling tired, if you look out among the world that we live in and you have disgust, or you just are anxious or fearful, if you look out and you're like, I cannot believe that we are going through this, listen, you are not alone. If you came to me and you said, Wendy, I am content and I am joy-filled every single day and I love the world that we live in, I'd be concerned because the truth of the matter is this is not our home. We are not to live in contentment this side of eternity. It's not promised to us. Jesus says that in this world, you will have problems. You will have trouble. That is a guarantee. And so it is 
really important for us to know that what we are going through, this commonality that we share as believers, is felt in a common battlefield because this is not our home. We are fighting on turf that does not belong to us. This is not our home. It's foreign territory, if you will. And when we are fighting every single day, listen, it can be wearisome. I know that I was just talking to somebody recently and I said, you know what, I'm not sure that these videos that I do every day are effective. I'm not sure if when I sit down to my computer to write a devotion and I share it on Facebook every day that it's really being valued by other people because it's hard. It's hard to sit down and do these things every single day. It's hard to serve the Lord every single day, especially when you feel like you're all alone. You know, sometimes I feel like Elijah, who once said, you know what, I'm the only one left in all of the land who's serving you, God. And God said, no, you're not. In fact, there are scores of people. There are hundreds of thousands of people who have not bowed down to worship the false idols of this world. And so one of the things that you need to know right out of the gate is that you're not alone in feeling this way. This is a part of serving the Lord. And when we are doing good and when we are putting forth the effort every single day, we are going to get tired. The battle is raging and the workers out on the battlefield are few. You know, these past two years have reminded us that life is hard. Evil is in our midst and that a real battle is facing every human heart. It's this wrestling. It is this battle for our very souls. There's a beautiful place in scripture that describes what every Christian ought to strive to behave like. And that's found in this story of Gideon. In a war that he was not prepared to face, yet armed with the strength that the Lord had other plans for him in, Scripture tells us, according to Judges 8-4, that Gideon then crossed the Jordan River with his 300 men, and though he was exhausted, they continued to chase the enemy. In a battle that he wasn't fit for, that he was ill-prepared for, God had other plans, and God had reduced his army of thousands of men to just 300. And with those 300 serious men, he went forward and he did what the Lord had asked him to do, and he faced the enemy head on. The King James tells us for Judges 8-4, it says it this way, that they were faint and yet they kept pursuing them. Faint yet pursuing. That's how I feel sometimes, don't you? Faint, weak, and tired. Ah, but to be those men who are able to say, I am tired, but I have not yet stopped pursuing the enemy. Because listen, there's a battle for your soul. There's a battle for your mind. There's a battle for your heart. And every day we have to use the word of God to combat evil. And what that means is we have to be in it. We have to know what the Lord is saying and what he has said. We have to know right now that we have the spiritual weapons necessary to fight the good fight in, of the faith. That we have what it takes to fight the faith, but sometimes we get tired. Sometimes we feel faint of heart. Sometimes we feel weak. And it's okay to be weak. It's okay to feel that weakness. It's okay to say that you are tired. And I would say this as a caveat to that. Even though it's okay that we're tired, it's okay that we feel faint, it's okay that we are weak, we can feel those things as long as we do these three things. One, that we keep looking up, that we keep looking up to God, we keep looking up to where our help comes from, that we look to the Lord for the strength that only He has. We say we are weak, but when we are weak, when we... When we have done all that we can, we look to the Lord for the strength that he has. 
The second thing is that we aim in the right direction. Listen, I always say I'm not arrived yet, but I'm keeping going in the right direction. I may not have gotten to my destination, but I am going the way in which the Lord is pointing. And then the third thing is to pray for the strength from his mighty hand. It's okay to feel weak. It's okay to feel so damaged in this season mentally that you feel like you can't even go on another step. Listen, I have talked to and encouraged scores of women who are in this same position that you are. They feel like they just have a hard time getting through this season. I am there with them, but you need to know that you are not alone. And so I need for you in this time to think of Gideon, to think of what needs to take place, to think of these regulations of war that Moses outlined. Yes, he said, I need for all of the troops to be present. But if you are feeling weak, if you are feeling filled with worry and trembling, maybe it's time that you sit out for a little while. It's okay to be tired. It's okay. Stop beating yourself up and give yourself some moments to breathe. It may be the best thing that we can do, not only for ourselves, but for our fellow soldiers in the field of battle. And maybe it's something that you need to say. Maybe this is what you need to say to your fellow troops. Give me some breathing room and I will catch up with you in a little bit. Give me some moments to rest my weary head, but do not count me out just yet. Do not count me out in this raging battle just yet. Save me a spot in line with the rest of the troops. And in a day or two, I'll be fueled for the race and ready to conquer my enemies once again. This, friend, this is the beginning of strength. And this is proof of a heart fully dedicated and yielded for the service of the Lord. This is okay. It is okay to admit when you just feel weak, where you just feel tired. It is okay to sit this one out. And I want to tell you this. It's an important thing not to miss this that God sees you, he knows you, he understands your heart, he sympathizes with your weariness, and God meets you in your struggle. He meets you right where you are. But can I tell you something else? A lot of Christians will stop when they say that. They will put a period at the end of that statement that God will meet you where you are, but I don't. I put a comma and I say this, God will meet you where you are, but he's not okay to leave you there. He has more planned for your life and more purpose for your life than you realize. And you can sit this out for a moment. You can give yourself some breathing room, but you need to spend that time, that downtime, praying that God would rejuvenate your heart, would reignite your spirit, would reignite that fire that once was there so that you can get back out on the battlefield. Listen, this is growth. This is spiritual growth. God is good. He sees you and he knows what you need. So I want to tell you this, take the time necessary to breathe, but not too long. Take some moments to catch your breath and then rejoin the battle that desperately needs what only you have to offer. And listen, I'm not just encouraging you today, I'm encouraging myself. I have looked at the work that the Lord has allowed me to do, has assigned me to do, and I have had a lot of weariness lately. I have had a lot of what ifs. What if I didn't do this anymore? What if I didn't speak life anymore? What if I just rode off into the sunset and never faced another day proclaiming the goodness of the Lord, making videos, sharing content on social media? What if I never did that? And the Lord said, Wendy, it's okay for you to sit out for a temporary period of time, but the world needs what only you have to offer. I have given you this gift to share with the world. And that's what the Lord is saying to you today. Listen, friend, he has given you a gift that only you possess. 
And if you don't fulfill the calling of God on your life, if you don't proclaim the good news where He has placed you, then no one else is gonna do it because you are uniquely designed by God for this day and age, for this moment in time, for this purpose, to bring honor and glory to Him. And so I pray that this has been an encouragement to you today, friend. If it has, would you like this video? Would you share it with someone who desperately needs to know? Listen, that is ultimately my heart, that this video would get shared on every platform so that other people can be encouraged. Listen, we are not to be like that lamp that is covered up. We are to let our light shine. So let your light shine by sharing this video. If you haven't already, Already subscribe to the channel become a part of this family of God I am so excited when you are here because it allows me to know that I am not alone in the struggles that I am facing if you haven't already hit that notification bell to be notified every single time that I upload content I upload three videos generally a week and I would love to have you return for future videos thank you again for being with me and I pray friend that you have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye-bye.